I'm continuing with the recent Nixie tube experiment. Right now I'm using three Nixie tubes and I'm trying to update the last project I had going years ago. I had four Nixie tubes on this breadboard with DuPont wires on these panel mount sockets going to these individual chips and I wanted to try to optimize all of that. So I recently made one of these HV5222 high voltage shift register driver boards, which has 32 outputs. And right now that driver is right here on sockets on this proto board. So then I needed a better way to hook up the actual Nixie tubes. So I made this Nixie tube socket breakout header board with today's sponsor, PCB Way. So the idea was I could have header pins that I can plug into either a breadboard or a PCB to provide the anode high voltage supply to the tube through a current limit resistor and have access to the pins for digits 0 through 9. And if the tube supports it, the optional left hand decimal point, but my tubes don't have that. And I made some mistakes on here. I actually had to take all the Nixie socket pins and mount them down here and put these headers sticking up the other way so I could mount it this way because I mirrored the pins on the footprint. I also didn't like the way I did the pin spacing on these headers, but I will put the schematic file and the corrected Nixie footprint up on GitHub. And these socket pins for the Nixie tubes, you can get them on eBay or AliExpress as Nixie socket pins. But I think I've seen people say online that they're really D sub connector socket pins. I haven't tested that out, but that's where I got those. So if I take this tube out of this old panel socket to identify the pinouts, an arrow points to the anode pin. And from there, you can figure out the pin numbers. So then this just has to line up with all these pins and it can push right in. Then that can plug into another board as a socket and be mounted whichever orientation. On the schematic for this connector breakout board, the anode of the Nixie tube has a current limit resistor. I don't specify a value here. It depends on what the voltage is of the high voltage supply and how much current the Nixie tube wants. I've seen resistor values used between 15 and 30k, depending on the current they want. So mine is the 12A Nixie tube. I don't have a left hand decimal point, but if it's a 12B tube, they have a left hand decimal point as well. And I think those have a different current limit required. So I put an option here for another resistor in case the 12B tube is installed, but I think there's still other recommendations like possibly to put a series dedicated resistor and then just put the correct one for the decimal point. But I've never tried any of that. I just put this here so it could be experimented with. And there's the 12A and 12B tubes and pinouts from the data sheet. There's the arrow pointing to pin one, which is anode. And then the pin numbers go 1 through 12 clockwise. So we got anode and then digit 0 and then counting down 9 through 1. And then it, whether you have a decimal point or nothing, it's no connection or decimal. So I have a high voltage separate power supply here powered from a bench supply giving 12 volts in. And I have it set for 180 volts out going to this board. I have the Arduino Nano here running a sketch to count from 0 up to 999 and then roll back over. And I set it up so there's no leading zeros. So we don't get 001. We'll just get a blank, blank, and then 1. And the left ones will only come on when needed. So I just wired up by hand as needed. And what I really made use of, I didn't want to run soldered wires for every connection. So all the Nixie tubes still have DuPont wires going from the driver board over to the Nixie tube. Everything is taped down. It's hard to show, but basically on all of the headers going to the outputs, I put a duplicate socket header beside the board and underneath they're just bridged over. So I have a duplicate set of pins and I just plug in the DuPont wire. So it's something like this. I have 
male pins here. They plug into a female socket on the board, but then there's a duplicate female socket beside it to plug in DuPont wires, and pin to pin is bridged over. So each driver output to control a certain digit will go to the Nixie tube. So normally these pins are all connected to open drain on the driver. So they're basically floating, no connection. When the digit comes on, the driver connects that digit pin to ground. And the anode is always connected to the 180 volts through a current limit resistor. So the digit will come on when the driver brings a certain pin to ground. And we only want one number on in the tube at a time. So when one is grounded, the rest are floating. So this nano here has a clock and serial data stream going to that Nixie driver, along with an output enable control so that we can make sure these digits are turned off while data is being clocked in so we don't get random digits activated. It's all just controlled in the sketch. So the Nano has some of its outputs coming to these control lines, which use the transistors to translate the 5 volt logic into 12 volt logic for this high voltage driver. The Nano is also giving 5 volts and ground to this boost converter to provide the 12 volt supply for this driver. So it brings these pins to ground to turn on digits. There's 32 outputs, and I'm using three Nixie tubes, 0 through 9, so I only need 30 of these 32 outputs. Now if I turn on the high voltage supply, so it started from 0, and there's no leading zeros. Hand wiring up this board, even with a couple of custom PCBs on it to make it easier, it was still a lot of labor, and I made some wiring mistakes I had to debug. So I think I want to ultimately expand this to get at least six digits. So I don't know if I'll do a custom PCB for that, or just continue it like this. But at least for now I'm back up and running with a better option than all of those other DuPont wires all over the breadboard.